Sean Foyt here, and I'm joined by a very special, incredible guest, Brian Dolly. And uh, State Senator, we're so thankful that you are on here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me on, Sean. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Yes. Well, we're uh, first of all, I just want to congratulate you on your victory and uh, in the in the gubernatorial gubernatorial race. And of course, you know us across California are extremely hopeful and desperate to see uh, somebody like you uh, step into that position as the governor of the fifth largest economy in the world. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, um, my family's been here for 92 years. My grandfather came during the Great Depression and ended up getting a land grant in Siskiyou County. And so uh, I'm looking forward to the future for my children. And I've been elected, as you know, here in California, uh, 10 years in the legislature, uh, 16 years on the Board of Supervisors in Lassen County. And I've been in the fight for a long time. And, you know, California needs change at, at this point. Uh, you know, we've had 25 years of one party control and Gavin Newsom is just running wild uh, here at the legislature. And you can't afford to live in California. Uh, gas prices are a dollar and a half a gallon higher than they are in other states. And it's time for change. Sean, you've been out. Uh, you know, you, you've been oppressed by uh, what has come out of this legislature, but you've stood up and done uh, some amazing things. Uh, and I applaud you for that, for you uh, just doing what is right. Uh, for, for what you believe in and what we all believe in. And it's now time for Californians to uh, step up and do what's right and actually vote. Uh, during the recall election, two and a half million Californians, uh, Republican Californians didn't vote. Wow, that is crazy. And, and is it true that more voted in the recall or, or more voted to sign their name uh, for the recall than actually voted in the recall election? No, that's not, I don't believe that's accurate, but I do know because we had to have like a million six right. uh, signatures, but no, but really people didn't show up. And that's, that's the problem with, uh, you know, I, I talk to uh, believers every day about, you know, what's, what it's like to be in, in California, but it's really crazy that, um, you know, Christians don't vote. Uh, they, right. they, they pray, they, they worship. Um, but I don't see them at the polls. And we know that because we can look at the voter registration list and see who's, who's actually voted. And so we can track it back and find out who voted. And we find that, um, you know, people don't show up. And that's quite frankly, uh, crazy. I don't understand why you would not vote when you see the oppression that is put on the people uh, here in California. You know, and that's, I mean, that's really precisely why Hold the Line exists. I mean, um, you know, I, that really shocked me too. Of course, I grew up, my parents were full-time medical missionaries around the world. So I grew up a lot in the nations, but, you know, we watched every single uh, inaugural address, you know, by the president, regardless of, of whatever party it was. We always were, you know, very patriotic. My parents were very, you know, engaged in voting and, you know, really passed that on to us. You know, it was a family thing. And so I was really surprised when I ran for Congress in the third district there that when I showed up in DC and I was at the NRSC and all these places, you know, trying to get support, trying to get them to come out. And they said, well, what's your plan? And I said, well, you know, we're going to mobilize the churches across, across the district. Like I got a lot of pull, we're going to do worship nights and then we're going to register people to vote. And Brian, they, they like laughed at me. They're like, are you serious? Like, that's your plan, you know? And I was like, yeah, I mean, look at the numbers. There's these many mega churches, there's these many members, and like right. all we need is for them to show up. And they just looked at me and they said, yeah, you can get the church to come to a prayer night, you can get them to come and worship, but you're not going to get them to vote. And, um, you know, it was sad and sobering that I realized how, how, how right they were. And um, so anyway, that, that's why we, that's why Hold the Line exists is to engage people, specifically young people, specifically Gen Z and millennials, to begin to vote, to let their voice be heard. Um, and so I, I, you know, we're trying everything that we can do and hopefully this conversation will compel people to get their heart in this race. Why did you feel, or where did you feel called to actually shift from, you know, your, your, your position right now in the legislature to actually running for governor? Like what was the, what was the thing that put you over the edge? You know, Sean, it's uh, kind of interesting. Actually during the recall, um, 
I was knowing we were going to lose. I knew we were going to lose the recall. And I, and I don't know, there was just like a stirring inside of me that like, you know, the time to run is after the recall when there's the general election where you actually have the top two. And um, God laid something on my heart a long time ago, actually, about uh, when I, I came here in 2012 and um, I was very frustrated. I, I worked across the aisle. I've had 127 legislators to my district. As you know, we're very rural in our part of the state. It's forgotten mostly. And I wanted to share with them that, you know, there's a different side of California that you need to see. And so I built all these relationships with, with uh, Democrat legislators and tried to um, like, you know, just bring common sense to the legislature. And um, there was a couple of votes uh, that really impacted my business. And I was just laying in bed one night with my family down here. I was thinking, you know, why am I here? What am I doing? God, and I was praying. I was like, God, what, what is, what am I supposed to do here? I mean, I'm here. I know I'm here. I'm from a town of, you know, 200 people. I wasn't supposed to be in the legislature to start with. I was out spent and, you know, I won. And so I, I didn't get an answer, but on the way home, um, I was about Red Bluff. I know you know where that's at, but uh, I was on I-5 and driving and, and I got do what they do. So I investigated why do, why do Republicans lose and why it's, it's because we don't show up. The, the Democrats have, have organized uh, their, their uh, community organizers and the organizers. There's three things. There's nothing changes in politics. It's the same thing. The people that show up uh, take from the people who don't show up and those who show up win. And, that's, and what, what do I mean by show up? It's not just vote. It's actually organize, get the people out to vote and raise money. You cannot put your you cannot get your story out without money. And that's where they really uh, hammered us. There's a lot of public unions in, Sa in Sacramento, and they all support Democrats. Uh, I'm going to give you an example of one union. There's SEIU 1000. There's not uh, 700,000 members. They donate $91 a month. It's $63 million a month they donate. Uh, not all that goes to campaigns, but about $300 million of it does. Now, what do they do with that? They actually are able to get their message out and talk to people and let people know who you are. You, people don't vote for people they don't know, but you have to have resources to get it out. So I came up with this uh, plan of if I could just have 200,000 people out of the 40 million people in California or, or wherever, just 200,000 people donating to my campaign $1 a day, a third of the cost of a cup of coffee, um, you know, one sixth of a gallon of gas here in California. If I could get 200,000 people that would just step up and donate $1 a day, it would raise about six million dollars a month. And as you know, when you ran for Congress, uh, if you'd have had a two million dollars, you would have won that race, right? You would have been able to educate everybody in that district who you are. Or two or three million dollars makes a big difference. But in the state of California, I mean, Gavin Newsom is sitting on uh, thirty-four million dollars right now, and he's using it uh, to own the airwaves, and and that's what we need. So I don't want to reach out to my friends that are um, believers, and I think about. Joshua and Caleb, who came back with a good report. I'm giving you a good report that we can take back the land, uh, yeah. but we have to do something. We can't let the next generation uh, put it off for the next generation. You know, God is opening up doors. We've seen Roe versus Wade. We've seen change. We've seen what you've right. been able to accomplish, uh, what you're doing. And so there is an opportunity right now in California to take back. And I believe that, that God's on the move. And I think it's time for us to step up and do what we need to do. And that means that people need to come alongside me uh, in my campaign and, and actually do the work. Uh, faith without works is dead. And I say to people, you know, I hear you. I know you're praying for me, but you got to walk with me, too. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, you know, during this, you know, governor um, election during the primary, I probably made a lot of pastors and, and people mad because I actually knew a lot of people that were running because um, California, there's a zillion people running, you know, right. as a Republican and they all have this word from God and it's, you know, and I don't doubt the sincerity of that, but just the reality that any of these people can, you know, um, galvanize or even have the political capital or experience to do something like this. And so I brought up your name to a lot of people early on. And I said, you know, I think Brian's probably, I mean, he's the most credible one here. And, um, and I said, we, we have to rally, you know? And so anyway, I knew you were going to, I knew you were going to win, you know, through the primary. And so my prayer now is that we can galvanize because what happens is 
Um, a lot of people in church, the churches, there are people getting engaged in politics, but in, in some specific instances, they wrap around one candidate that either goes to their church or is in their church network. And my prayer now is that because those other candidates didn't make it, that we can still take that same energy, you know, and begin to direct it as a, as a common good towards you, towards what you're doing, towards defeating Newsom. Um, how do you feel like you know, you being from, you know, up north rural, of course, I, you know, I live in, I'm in Orange County now, but I lived in Redding on 15 mm -hmm. acres, very ag-ish lifestyle. And there's definitely two Californias. How do you bridge the gap between the California that you know and live and then those with the population basis of LA, SAC, you know, San Fran, places like that that are really the voting core? Well, as you know, uh, well, you might not know. So I, I represent 11 counties in California right now, and I represent Sacramento County. So I have very rural from the Oregon border all the way to Sacramento. So I have rural, suburban and urban areas in, in my district now. But it doesn't really, um, th there's no difference between uh, a Californian that's in, in Redding or a Californian that's in San Diego. We have homeless in both places. We have the cost of living in both places. Right. People want freedom. They want to be able to live in California, drive down the cost of living. We have, we have the same problems. It doesn't matter where you're at. I mean, that's what I think most uh, Californians are, are, are frustrated with. It It doesn't matter where you go. I mean, we think about, yeah, it might be a little different in San Francisco where you have, you've seen uh, fentanyl and the, and the lives lost there. Uh, that might be a little different than Reading, but we're still, we've lost lives to fentanyl and Reading. Uh, we've lost lives in San Diego and in Los Angeles and Malibu. It doesn't matter where you're at in California. So I think the issues are the same. People want to be able to afford to live in California. You can't afford to live here. People are fleeing our state. So my message is to Californians, look, if you like what you've been getting, if you want four more years of Gavin Newsom, uh, then vote for him. Look, if you love what's happening in California, you, we, we, are, we have the highest tax rate in the nation and the highest poverty rate in the nation at the same time. More money in Sacramento than there's ever been. Uh, we just passed a budget last night, about 1030 last night, $97 billion in surplus, Sean. Think about that. It's more than most countries' budgets, and it's in surplus, and they're, they're spending it on all kinds of – they're not giving it back to you. It was your money that you paid in to start with. It's about $2,400 per resident in California. They're going to give you back two or $300, maybe four or 500 this fall, in a, in a check with Gavin Newsom's name out trying to buy your vote. But at the end of the day, to answer your question, there's a lot of pain in California, across California. It doesn't matter where you live, it's all the same. If we need somebody who understands how the government works, I've been here for 10 years in the legislature. I understand how the, what, what the positive things of it are and the flaws and the, and the way to actually work in the legislature. So that's where it brings me a leg up. Um, it's a joke in the Capitol amongst my friends across the aisle that um, they'll have more time. They call it the horseshoe where the governor's at. Uh, they'll have more time in the horseshoe when I could become governor uh, than they do now because Gavin Newsom is just really out of touch. He's an elitist Democrat. He's not even in touch with Democrats. And uh, he's running for president of the United States. That's what he's focused on. He's not yeah. focused on what's happening in here in California. So uh, I think to answer your question, it doesn't matter where you're at. It really is the same issues, just on a different, uh, broader scale. Well, I hope he gets sidetracked by that, um, that uh, his pres presidential aspirations, because I, I just think that's hilarious, um, especially after you know the recall situation. Um, I want to talk a, a minute about um, you know God and the church and politics. I, I was actually just at uh, two nights ago. I was at Lauren Boebert's. Um, uh, uh, celebration uh, or her watch party in um, in Colorado, and so this was the second uh, event that I've been to. The one before that, of course, I get invited to do all these things with politicians, and you know sometimes it's hard to know if it, if you're if they're just checking the evangelical box and want <laughs> me to come and do a song or a prayer, kind of you know kind of to make sure that they appeal to that side. But uh, but then I, I have things that I really feel like the Lord says, no, you're supposed to do this. One of them being. Uh, a guy named Mastriano that was running in Pennsylvania for governor. And, you know, he was kind of a, a dark horse, long shot, didn't get the GOP nomination. People weren't really behind him. They thought he was too crazy, too right wing, too Christian. And I felt like the Lord told me to work with him. Anyway, long story short, I, I did worship for his watch party 
Uh, CNN was there, Washington Post was there, MSNBC was there. He got Trump's nomination like a day or two before the election because he was just crushing in the polls. God became the center of his of his campaign uh, push for Pennsylvania, like this this mandate from God uh, over the state of Pennsylvania. And people thought it wouldn't work and it worked. And not only it's continuing to work, the polls are showing him crushing right now. Um, and, and so, and then same with Lauren, you know, we were there and, and at a bar in Colorado and we took over the bar with worship and we praised God. And we actually found out that she won before we even started, but she's like, I want to just worship in the bar with people. So I just think it's amazing. You know, people call it Christian nationalism. They call it all kinds of things, but I really see there's a new, uh, there's a new standard of bold leaders in politics that are unafraid to put God in the center. And I'm seeing those guys having phenomenal success, especially in the heels of Roe v. Wade and all of these things that Christians have been fighting for. How do you see that? And how do you integrate that into your message and what you're called to do? Because, you know, there's millions of Christians all across California, you know, and how does that factor in? Well, you know, I've not been one that's uh, worn my Christianity on my sleeve for the most part. I believe that I just got to walk the walk. And your example of what you do, I think, is more loud than what you say. And right. so um, that's how I've approached my walk in life with uh, my belief. And, you know, <laughs> and that I'm, a, I'm a guy from nowhere. I mean, literally nowhere that, you know, I laugh and talk about what God's done in my life. Uh, you can just see it. I, I'm, a, I'm a state senator from a town of 150 people that the closest Walmart is 75 miles away. The closest, uh, <laughs> the closest Costco is, is in Reading, actually 110 miles from my home. So uh, there are miracles. That's why I believe I'll win this race that, you know, it doesn't really matter when God, when God's behind something, he's going right. to do it. And so, um, but I, th I think more, it's just the walk. Um, you know, I was the only member of the Republican Party that uh, last year uh, stood up when Roe versus Wade and spoke against it. I mean, they had they celebrated every year in our capital. They've se they celebrated Roe versus Wade. Now, this was a year ago uh, before we knew the Supreme Court was going to. And I stood up and talked about, you know, life. And so for me, it's more uh, I know what God lays on my heart. I'm not one that goes out and says, you know, God spoke to me. I don't that's not how God works with me. So I just walk it. And I think that if you uh, you, if you read some of the articles and things that pe people have written about me, um, they know that uh, that I just walk my faith. And I and that's pretty much more because I've seen you know, I've kind of got a bad taste sometimes as, as a business owner. People talk about their Christianity and then you do business with them and you're like, wow, that's not the kind of Christian I want to be because the right. business dealings didn't work out well. So for me, I just walk it out, Sean, and it's worked well. Um, God is good. I, I tell you, uh, I want people to come alongside me. And, you know, I'm not going to be the guy that's going to go out there and give you a sermon. I'm going to be the guy that's going to be walking and doing what's right uh, all the time. Yeah. How do you feel? Last night we, we, uh, we were in Orange County and we had a celebration night of worship and, you know, raised thousands of dollars for local pregnancy centers. Um, and, you know, we were just praying into the Roe v. Wade thing. Obviously, California doesn't seem like it affects it's going to affect much. In fact, it might have the opposite effect in making this an abortion sanctuary state. Um, how do you, wh where do you see that fight going to in a state like this, um, in a post row world? Well, we're going to see. I think it's um, actually amazing that it's going to be on the ballot. We're going to see where Californians really are. You know, 50 years, we've had the Supreme Court's ruling across our country. And that's changed right now. So now this will be the first time that people actually go in and, 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 check the box that they vote and it's, it's on them. If you, if you want the blood on your hands and you vote for it, or you, are you, you know, it's, it's going to be different. I think people are going to realize that when they go vote, it's on them. It's not a decision that was made somewhere else. You're the one making that decision. So I'm excited to see how Californians vote in this ballot initiative to see where we're at. I think you're going to be surprised. I think you'd be really surprised when people go, you know, and this, this bill that's coming forward in California is very wide open. There's, it is not the first trimester. This is, this could be a partial birth, birth abortion It's very wide open. So, uh, to see how this gets messaged out, Sean, and where people land, I think it's going to be fascinating. And I think you're going to see that people are not that crazy or not, are not that uh, excited about 
taking a life when they know the baby could live for sure. And uh, we'll, we're going to see. So I'm excited to see what happens here in California. I think it's going to turn a lot of people out. I hope it does. Uh, and I'm excited to give the people a choice, not, not just let the courts uh, decide where we're at. As we've, as we've um, entered into those fights across, not only just in California, but across America uh, with uh, minority communities, I've started to notice, uh, and we're seeing this across America, is what polling is showing, that Hispanics are overwhelmingly coming yeah. to the right. Um, when every time we do a, a protest against Disney, for example, it's predominantly Hispanics and African-Americans um, in California that show up. Where do you see the Hispanic folk playing into this? Um, do you see something like like, there, like they saw in Texas, obviously with that district on the border that hadn't flipped in 40 years and we saw it flip. What do you think about Hispanics in this state? Well, we know that most Hispanics are Catholic and Catholics are pro-life. And so, uh, and we've also seen uh, Hispanics leaving the Democrat party uh, because they're working people and their family people, they want an education for their children. They're small. They're the largest group of small business owners, by the way, too. So I think you're going to see a huge move there, and that's my point: is that uh, California has a lot of Hispanics, a lot of people of faith that are uh, going to rise up. I believe they just got to go vote. They underst understand. It. I think this is going to push them out, and I think it's going to surprise the left, uh, Gavin Newsom, and those people who think this is going to going to save them, or or even. Uh, you know, Joe Biden thinks this is going to save his party because we know it's uh, there is a red wave coming. There's no doubt about it. And just what you uh, recalled about the Texas vote. So uh, I think we're going to see him come out in, a, in, in strength. Absolutely. Last question. I, um, I so, of course, I care about the moral issues. This is why I ran for Congress. I care about abortion. I care about, you know, the, the sexualization of our kids, all that kind of stuff. Right. And I think a lot of Californians care about that. But actually, when you look at the polling, um, specifically post row, and this is from this is from states all across America, people actually don't work. People are in such a crisis with inflation, with gas, with like they don't actually care as much about Roe v. Wade as they care about inflation. I mean, it's it's actually it's shocking. You know, I, I would never think that we would be in this position, but people are like, yeah, 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 but I can't provide, you know, groceries, you know, I can't, like, how do you see that playing in? What do you think is gonna happen? Um, as we approach the midterms, of course, we're gonna experience this pressing even more. How do you see that affecting your race here in California? Well, Sean, when I first announced February 8th, the number one thing was on people's mind was crime. <laughs> that changed to inflation. And now we've seen, obviously, um, you know, the right to life been, has been changed. So as you know, in politics, at 24 hours, your whole life can change. Uh, right. But inflation has been crushing people. If you're on a fixed income or you're an hourly wage earner, uh, you're getting destroyed by the cost of living. And, uh, and, and you're in a way where you can't move. Uh, you can't get out of California if you want to. And so I think it's going to play huge in this race. It's not going to go away. Uh, we're adding more. They're adding more money into the the pot by handing out these 17 billion dollars in checks it's just going to drive inflation up again wow well brian how can uh, how can we get behind you how can we support you um how can people find out more about who you are your policies your heart blah 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 i mean they're hearing a lot on here and i appreciate the time but how can they dive a little deeper into your race and well and, and get really support you well, first, I want to thank you for having me on. And the, the, the best way to help somebody who's running for office is, is move your feet. You, I want people to, I need 200,000 people donating a dollar a day. And it's amazing how somebody people think that somebody else is going to do it. You need to do it. It's for the future of your kid. doesn't matter if you're in California or not. As California goes, the nation goes. Um, a dollar a day, a third of the cost of a cup of coffee. You can go to briandally.com. That's B-R-I-A-N-D-A-H-L-E.com. Uh, and it's, you can just you can use your credit card. You can do PayPal. You can write a check. Or we're asking for three hundred sixty-five dollars, a dollar a day for a year. Uh, so if you can do that, that would gratefully help our campaign. Like mobilize, get out to vote. Tell your friends. Tell ten of your friends to do it. That's our goal. Number one, donate a dollar a day. Number two, tell ten of your friends. And number three, get out to vote. Those are the three things I need you to do. Spread the word about BrianDaly.com. Follow us on all of our social media platforms. Uh, that's that's what would really help, Sean. And I appreciate. It. Look, I've, I've watched what you've done. You started out doing a small thing and you've grown it into a movement. 
And that's really what we need for this race. We need a movement of people to move their feet for the next generation. I say this to people every day. You're going to get four more years of Gavin Newsom if you don't do something. And you're going to have to look your children in the eye and say, what did I do? Did I just vote? Did I not vote? Did I donate a dollar a day? But you're going to look back at this time in history. And this is a time just like it was for the 12 that went in. Two came back with a good report. Joshua and Caleb, we can have a good report. We just got to take the land and bring heaven to earth. How about let's bring God down here and, and watch what he can do and heal this land because it's suffering because of the policies that the enemy is allowed to uh, come into our capital. Yeah, and I want to encourage everybody too. Like you can't, I think uh, Californians, especially believers, have to move beyond despair of the supermajority and realize that like it is possible. I mean, it has happened. We have the history of Reagan. We have the history of, of God moving. We have the history of the Jesus people moving of Azusa Street. Like God loves this state. There's a reason why he has us here. I mean, listen, I'm in Orange County and I, I am shocked, Brian. I mean, I lived in Redding, you know, Redding, you, you, you don't really don't get more red than Redding, but Orange County, I mean, it's, it's a test to beat. People down here are fired up. People down here are mobilizing. People down here are excited. They're excited at what God's doing. And they're also excited to let their voice be heard. So, you know, I think we're going to see, a, I think we're going to see really a, a red wave hit California in ways that we have not seen the prime conditions are right. People are frustrated. They're irritated and, um, and they need hope. And so I thank you for taking the stand, man. I know the hits that you take jumping into this race, what wildness, you know, that God would raise up somebody from a little town like that, uh, to take on a giant, but that's what we see with David and Goliath. That's what we've seen with Roe v. Wade. God has a story of doing just exactly that. So we want to get behind you. We want to support you. And we want to take a stand for this state that we love. Thanks so much for, for joining us. Really, really appreciate it. Hope we can do this again. Absolutely. I'd love to. Remember, David didn't just go back to his flock and pray. He grabbed some rocks and a sling and he took the giant down. That's what Christians need to do. Get in the fight. It's time. Thanks, Sean. Love you, man. Love what you're doing. Get the rocks. Thank you. Love you too, man. God bless you.